Hello everyone, in this video I will provide you a brief and easy to understand introduction to MATLAB's mesh grid function. Also, I will explain you how to use the mesh grid function to generate 3D plots of analytic functions. For example, let's say that you want to visualize in three dimensions a parabolic function that you can see over here. I will explain you three methods for generating the plots. These three methods produce these three graphs that you can see over here, over here, and over here. These graphs are generated by using mesh, surf, and surf L functions. Similarly, let's say that you want to visualize this exponential function that you can see over here and its graph generated by using the surf function is shown over here. The skills that you will learn in this video are very important for generating professionally looking graphs that you can add to your lab reports or to your scientific papers. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. I created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. This post contains codes, contains explanations, and contains graphs. A link to this post is given in the description below. Also, if you like this video or if you find this video useful for your project, please press the like button or subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. First, we will define two vectors that define x and y coordinates of my grid. These two vectors are x that goes from 0 with a step of 1 until 5 and the vector y. And you can see them over here. So here's my vector x and here's my vector y. Now, I will call the mesh grid function by providing the vectors x and y as input arguments. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's the result. As the result, I obtain two matrices. Basically, this matrix x replicates row-wise my vector x, and then I have the matrix y that replicates column-wise the vector y. Basically, these two matrices define the points on the grid. So the coordinates of the points are read like this. Point 1 has the coordinate x0, y0. Point 2 has the coordinate x1, y0. Point 3 has the coordinate x2, y0. That is, any point, let's call it P, has coordinates x, i, j, and y, i, j. You can graphically represent this grid by the following graph. So, every point, let's say the point over here, has two coordinates. One coordinate is x11 and another coordinate is y11. Y11. Okay, so the mesh grid will return us two matrices whose entries <clears throat> correspond to coordinates on the grid. And the coordinates, or actually the points, can be illustrated by this graph. And that's it. That's the mesh grid function. The mesh grid function transforms vectors into the set of coordinates. Okay, let us now explain how to use the mesh grid function to generate the 3D plots of functions. First, I will redefine my x and y vectors. Since I want to have a nice dense grid. Okay, so here's my vector x and my vector y, they will specify the grid starting from minus 5 to 5 on both x 
and y-axis with the grid step of 0 0.5. So let, let us now pre reproduce or actually produce x and y matrices. So here are our x and y matrices. And let's define a parabolic function. So here is my parabolic function. It's basically x squared plus y squared. And I want to produce the z value. So what do I do? I take my matrices produced by mesh grid and I apply the power to two entries, but I do that element wise, right? I'm not doing something like this. I'm not multiplying matrix by matrix. This is not what I'm doing. I'm basically doing something like this. I'm applying the power to my matrices X and Y element Y. So let's see that. Okay, now I have my matrix of Z coordinates that is obtained by taking powers, the second powers of X and Y entries or actually the entries of x and y matrices and adding them together and let us plot this function we'll plot this function using the serve function okay so here's my plot here's my graph it's a three-dimensional parabolic function you can see it over here you can rotate it you can save it you can plot it you can do basically manipulations, you can add X and Y axis, Z axis labels, etc. So if you want to save, I usually save as PNG file and PNG files are very convenient for importing them in your Word document or you can even save this graph as a PDF file and then you can import it in latex if you have a latex editor for writing scientific reports. Okay, so that's another uh, that's one way of doing this, okay? So let us now explain this method further by, for example, plotting an exponential function. This can be, for example, a probability density function of a Gaussian distribution. So let's plot this function. Again, I'm going to apply the second power element-wise to the matrix X and the second power element wise to the matrix Y. So let's plot the result. Okay, so here's my, let's say Gaussian distribution. Now, there is another way for obtaining 3D plots. We can use the mesh function. So I can simply say mesh Z1 in order to obtain a mesh corresponding to my parabolic function. Now, notice what's happening over here. The mesh function does not take X and Y matrices as its arguments. Instead, it only takes Z1, Z values as its only argument. So what happens here? This function cannot plot the limits and it simply starts enumerating from one on the X and Y axis. Now, we can also use the function surfl, right, to obtain the graphs. So, for example, if you do surfl, you will obtain this graph where you stated that the shading should be flat. If you want to have a different type of shading, you can, for example, use this option, shading faceted. So, let's see the result. Okay, so here is your result. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.